Say hello, everybody. Welcome to our virtual program. The Ocean County Library Adult Service and Youth Service Departments are thrilled to have partnered with the Filipino American Community Development Center to bring you this program, Fun and Forgotten Facts About Philippine Culture. My name is Karen. I am one of the librarians at the Ocean County Library, Tom's River Branch, and I'm part of a team that brings you informative adult programs to our community. We are excited to be using this online format to bring you programs while in-person events at the library are temporarily suspended. Joining us this evening is Jamie Marinara. She has been a resident of Ocean County for more than 30 years and an Ocean County Library cardholder for almost just as long. She's a member of the Filipino American Community and Developmental Center of Ocean County. Her three children participate in FCDC, Filipino American Cultural Enrichment Studies Program. And Jamie is the editor in chief of FCDC's monthly e newsletter and also volunteers in the children's ministry and women's ministry of her church. She works as a pre employment counselor, teaching high school students with special needs the skills to obtain and maintain a job. She's working towards her second bachelor's degree in psychology and Christian counseling. So welcome, Jamie. Thank you so much for being here. Where is yours? Thank you for that introduction, Ms. Karen. Okay, so um, the presentation today is Fun and Forgotten Facts About Philippine Culture. Okay, so the Philippines is a combination of cultures. The earliest inhabitants come out of Africa. Um, they were the Negritos, and they are part of the descendants of the first migrations out of Africa. Then in 2200 BC, the Astronesians reached the Philippines, and those are people from Taiwan, Maritime Southeast Asia, Oceania, and Madagascar. The Filipino identity was created as a result of pre-colonial cultures and foreign traders from China during the Ming Dynasty. And we were also colonized by the Spanish and the British, and a lot of the Filipino words come from the Spanish language. The United States also colonized for almost 50 years. It is ma manifested in the wide use of the English language, media, and in the modern culture and the clothing of present day Philippines. This slide is about the early settlers. Um, what you see here is the Manongol jar. It's a burial jar that's actually a lot smaller than what the picture portrays. It dates from 890 to 100, 710 BC. And there are two figures on the top of the handle that represent the journey of the soul to the afterlife. And this jar is widely acknowledged to be one of the finest Philippine pre-colonial artworks ever produced. And it's made of clay and some sand soil. And this is the Laguna Copper Plate, which was actually found by accident. The name comes from where it was found in Laguna. This was found by accident, like I said, near the city state of Pondo, which is in the Manila Bay area. It says here that the Laguna Copper Plate inscription is inscribed with small writing hammered into its surface, and it shows the heavy Indian cultural influence present in the Philippines prior to the European colonization in the 16th century. So the inscription actually documents the existence of in names of several neighboring states, which is the city of state of Tondo, which is um, by Manila Bay. And um, it says that some historians suggest that this implies economic, cultural, and political connection between these states, as well as the Medan Kingdom in Java, which it was a Hindu Buddhist kingdom in Indonesia. This inscription was found in 1989 near the mouth of the Lumbang River near Laguna de Bay by a man who was dredging sand to turn into concrete. Ferdinand Magellan, he was a Portuguese explorer who led the Spanish expedition to the East Indies from 1519 to 1522. He discovered the Philippines on March 16, 1521, resulting in the first circumnavigation of the Earth. So he befriended local leaders on the island of Lima Sawa, if I'm saying that correctly, and converted the locals to Christianity. So there was a fierce clash fought in the Philippines on the 27th of April, 1521. Lapu Lapu, the leader of the Mathan, re resisted, and he, he, he and his warriors defeated a Spanish force 
fighting for Raja Humaban of Cebu under the command of Magellan, who was killed in the battle. Miguel Lopez de la Gaspi continued the expeditions of Magellan, and that led to the colonization of the Philippines for 333 years. The Spanish explorers is um, Rai Lopez de Villalobos and Philip II of Spain. So Rai Lopez de Villalobos was commissioned in 1541 by the Viceroy of New Spain, Antonio de Mendoza, who was the first colonial administrator in the New World. He descended into expedition to the Islas del Poniente, meaning Islands of the West, now known as the Philippines. Vila Lobos gave the Philippines their name after calling them Las Islas Filipinas in honor of Philip of Austria, who later became Philip II of Spain. So these are some fast facts of the Philippines. Um, the capital of the Philippines is Manila, and it is the second largest archipelago in the world with more than 7,641 islands. There is a population of more than 106 million people, and it is ranked as the seventh most populated country in Asia and the 12th most populated country in the world. The main languages of the Philippines is Filipino and English, and there are actually 120 regional languages. So if you think about it, if we were to compare that to the United States, it would be like New Jersey and California having two completely like, different languages within one the same within the United States. Um, the climate is similar to living in Florida year round. They have rainy and dry seasons, and the average temperature is 78 degrees. And its currency is the Philippine peso. Understand the equivalence between the American dollar and the Philippine peso. Um, a six pack of Coca-Cola cans is right now is about 150 pesos, which equals to $3.14. The national sport is Arnis, which is martial arts, but basketball and boxing are also very popular. There is a national league in the Philippines, but the NBA is actually a really big deal over there as well. This is the Philippine flag. One of its unique features is its usage to indicate a state of war. So when it is flipped upside down and the red side is on top, that it shows that the country is in war. So the golden yellow star, each of which representing one of the country's three main island groups, Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao. And the white triangle at the flag represents liberty, equality, and fraternity. And in the center of the triangle is a golden yellow sun with eight primary rays, each representing a Philippine province. These are just some highlights of the Philippines as well. Um, if you see this animal all the way to the left, it is a tarsier. It's actually the size of a tennis ball and it is one of the oldest and smallest primates on the planet, dating back to at least 55 million years. Boracay Beach is the, there is the white beach in Boracay, which was placed second in Conan's 25 best island beaches in the world, according to the Reader's Choice Awards in 2020. And in the bottom, um, you see these jeeps. They were actually army jeeps that were used in the U.S. military um, that was left over after the war. So they're known as jeepneys and they're very colorful. Some other facts over here to the side, people text more than anywhere else in the world in the Philippines. And as I mentioned before, Filipinos are crazy about basketball and they have makeshift hoops in every corner. And they also wear their favorite NBA jerseys. And there is actually the SM Mall of Asia, which is 4.2 million square feet, the third biggest mall in the world. Just to give you an idea of how big it is, it's not like the typical malls that you see here in New Jersey or Ocean County. There is a supermarket inside of it where you can buy groceries, furniture, there's a drugstore, um, banks. And one thing you're going to see throughout the video is that Filipinos love food. So there's lots of food options there. And now we're going to show a video to, um, to kind of highlight what I just meant, which I just talked about.
We have another clip here about the Filipino American history. Um, the Filipino American History Month is celebrated in the United States during the month of October. So October was chosen to commemorate the arrival of the first Filipinos who landed in what is now Morro Bay, California on October 18, 1587. 11 million work overseas. So Philippine immigrants represent the largest share of America's 512,000 immigrant registered nurses in the United States. American story. Before the founding of America, even before the settlement of Jamestown, there were Filipinos in what is now known as the continental United States. Throughout history, Filipino Americans have led movements, confronted injustices, and have created world-shaking ideas. They disrupt. So why is their history largely untold? We must tell them to unsettle the pages of U.S. history. They reveal who we are as Americans. People from the Philippines, which was under Spain, first landed in California as part of the Spanish galleons. On future sailings, many jumped ship to form settlements in what would be known as Louisiana. It is a fact. Filipino Americans have been in the United States for centuries. In 1898, the United States entered into war against Spain and took possession of the Philippines, paying Spain $20 million. To rationalize colonization, American officials referred to this as benevolent assimilation, claiming to protect Filipinos' rights and liberties. But the Filipino people, who were already fighting for independence from Spain, resisted U.S. colonization. This was known as the Philippine-American War. Fought with extreme violence, General Jacob H. Smith notoriously ordered his soldiers to kill every Filipino boy over 10 years old. Many Americans opposed this, including Mark Twain and the African-American Buffalo soldiers who were sent to the Philippines for battle. Somehow, America needed to justify this war. They even transported some Filipinos to the 1904 St. Louis World's Fair for display. Erased from our history, the Forgotten War became the catalyst of Filipino migration to the U.S. Because of the Philippines' colonial status, the people became a major source of cheap labor. And so, Filipinos migrated to Hawaii as early as 1906 to work in sugar plantations. By the 1920s, many Filipino laborers also came to the West Coast to become a driving force behind America's agricultural industry. But many of these labor migrants were met with racial hostility. White Americans accused Filipino men of stealing their jobs and women. Filipinos faced down bombs, beatings, and murder, yet they resisted the suppression. 
Filipino towns such as Stockton's Little Manila were formed to serve as safe havens up and down the West Coast. Labor strikes demanded fair wages and working conditions. Under pressure, Congress greatly restricted the migration of Filipinos and promised independence for the Philippines. Through it all, Filipinos continued to persevere. World War II was a time of great upheaval for both the Philippines and Filipino Americans. Japan bombed American bases in the Pacific, at Pearl Harbor, and in the Philippines, prompting the U.S. to enter the war. As a colony, the Philippines allied with America. President Roosevelt established the United States Armed Forces in the Far East to enlist nearly 250,000 Filipinos into the U.S. Armed Forces, a decisive move that helped win the Pacific Theater. After the war, America granted independence to the Philippines. Filipinos who joined the armed forces in the U.S. gained the right to citizenship. Filipino veterans in the Philippines were promised citizenship as well and military benefits. However, the passing of the 1946 Precision Act broke that promise for many of those veterans. American military bases remained in the Philippines recruiting Filipinos. At one point, there were more Filipinos in the U.S. Navy than the Philippine Navy. Many of these Navy sailors came to America. Filipino women married to U.S. military men also migrated to the U.S. These women raised families, bought land, and created communities. They built the next generation of Filipino Americans. In 1965, an important legislation greatly expanded immigration quotas. By 1970, the Filipino population had ballooned. In a decade, it had more than doubled. Many of these new immigrants were women and professionals. In the 60s, Filipino Americans fought for equality alongside Black Power and Chicano movements. In California, Larry Idliong, Philip Veracruz, and other organizers led a strike against great businesses. Filipinos convinced Cesar Chavez and his association to join the strike. Filipinos started the 1965 Delano Grape Strike, and together with Latinos, they had one of the most successful strikes against agribusiness in history. The younger generation were also in revolt. San Francisco State University and UC Berkeley students, including young Filipino Americans, led a strike that established ethnic studies. Many other groups organized to serve the Filipino American community. There are now over 4 million Filipinos in the United States. FONS, the Filipino American National Historical Society, tells the stories of the Filipino American experience. Established in 1982 by Dorothy Ligo Cordova and Fred Cordova, FON saw the value in documenting Filipino American history, honoring October as Filipino American History Month. And why wouldn't they? Filipino Americans persevere for a just and prosperous society, no matter the stakes. Whether they excel in public service, head the Filipino food movement, inspire us as sports heroes and as creative artists, whether they spark innovation across industries, lead movements for justice, fight for national recognition and the Congressional Gold Medal for Filipino World War II veterans. Filipino Americans disrupt, and their stories cannot fade. No matter what forces make us forget, we recover them, reveal, and speak about their stories. Because as we make history, we must also tell it to the world. Okay, and just to give you an idea from what was said in the video, I know personally that a lot of the Filipinos in our area are nurses, and a lot of the men were our veterans, our Navy veterans. Um, that includes my own parents, who came here, just as the video said, as recruited into the Navy and recruited as a nurse. Okay, so this is all about our favorite pastime, eating out, eating. Our food is influenced mainly by Indian and Chinese, as well as ind indigenous ingredients. So the Spanish colonizers and friars in the 16th century brought with them produce from the Americas, such as chili peppers, tomatoes, corn, potatoes, and the method of sauteing with garlic and onions. A typical Pinoy diet consists of six meals a day at most, breakfast, snack, lunch, more snack, 
dinner, and again, a midnight snack before we go to sleep. Rice is a staple in the Filipino diet and is usually eaten together with other dishes. We eat with our hands, we use spoons um, with forks and knives, uh, we put them together as we eat. Rice, corn, and popular dishes, dishes such as adobo, which is a meat stew made from either pork or chicken, lumpia, which are, equivalent, are similar to the egg rolls that you see in Chinese restaurants or other Asian restaurants. Pancit is a noodle dish, and lechon baboy is roasted pig. You can see there's this one, the first picture down here is depict the pig roasting on the spit. Filipinos also celebrate the longest Christmas season as early as September, and I believe it's on this slide because there's a lot of eating involved when it comes to celebrating the holidays. And the middle picture, there is a purple dessert that is the popular ube, which is made out of purple yam. And what I just found out recently is Uncle Dude's, which is in Tom's River right by the library, is this donut shop that they actually have ube donuts now. And Jollibee's, that last picture, Jollibee is the equivalent to McDonald's in the Philippines. And there are actually locations here in the United States. Um, there's one in New Jersey and in New York. So these are some of the things that we do, our cultural values. Uh, the first one here is mano, and actually that's a Spanish word again for hand. So you can see the Spanish influence there. It's an honoring gesture used in Filipino culture. So what the person does is take the hand of the elder and place it on their head as a way to request a blessing from the elder. And it is also a sign of respect. And grandparents are called Lolo or Lola. And we have a strong commitment to our families. And Bayanian, I believe is, <laughs> I hope I'm saying that correctly. Um, so the Tagalog word for Bayan for nation is a Tagalog word for nation, town, or community. So Bayanian literally means being in a Bayan. It refers to the fundamental aspect of our Filipino culture, which is to work together as a community to achieve a common goal. Some other values um, and traits of Filipinos um, are optimistic, hospitable, and religious. We are also hard workers and big music lovers. So if you are ever at a Filipino party, you already know about the line dancing and the karaoke. So there are a lot of talented Filipinos and Filipino Americans and people of Filipino descent. And we're very proud of the Filipino Americans who continue to make a difference in the world and in our communities. Just to highlight a few, um, right now, some of the big names in music, um, Olivia Rodrigo and her. Um, and her was actually the 2021 Grammy Award winner for her song, I Can't Breathe. And we also have, all know the famous living legend, Leia Salonga. She was the first Asian to win a Tony Award for the Broadway show, Miss Saigon. And she's actually the singing voice of the Disney princesses, Mulan and Jasmine. There's Bruno Mars is, um, is of Filipino descent, Apple to App from Black Eyed Peas, then Miss Universe of 2018 and 2015, Katriona Gray and Pia Wurzbach. And also the world famous boxer and politician, Manny Pacquiao. And one fun fact about him is that there's been several reports that during his boxing matches, there's actually zero crime rate in many areas of the Philippines because they're all busy watching him. And also one, another one I wanna highlight is the, lead, the current lead um, vocalist of Journey, which is Arnel Pineda. As Ms. Karen mentioned, this was made possible by the Filipino American Community and Development Center partnered with the Ocean County Library. We are, very much part of the community at, in Ocean County. We do a cultural variety show. Um, we have the Filipino American Cultural Enrichment Studies for our youth, a community garden, which produces fruits and vegetables, which we donate to food pantries in our area. We've participated in Tom's River's Founders Day for more than 10 years. We do Christmas caroling, because as I mentioned, singing is such a big part of our culture. So we sing in nursing homes. And we're also um, in alliance with the Filipino American Medical Society and the Philippine Nurses Association. And we collaborate with the Freed Foundation, the Ocean County Library, Tom's River United, and Tom's River Arts Community. 
We have a PPE brigade that was formed um, in the beginning of the, of the COVID-19 pandemic, and we provide masks and face shields for our frontliners and essential workers. All right, so thank you very much. Um, we're going to go into a language lesson, uh, but just so you know that if you do want to take and make, you can pick it up from the Tom's River Library from now until I believe next week. So if you've noticed throughout the video, I try my best at speaking Tagalog, which is the Philippine language. I'm not a native speaker. I was born here in the United States. So we're learning together today. These are just some common phrases that you would hear. How are you? I'm good. Thank you. You're welcome. So the first one I wanted to teach you was Comosta, which is short for Comostaca, which is actually derived from the Spanish um, phrase, como estas, which means, how are you? And to answer that, you would say, mabuti naman, which is, I am good. And the way we say thank you in Tagalog is maraming salamat. And you're welcome is walang anuman. I love you is mahal kita. And of course, I wanted the phrase, let's eat, to be part of this presentation because food, again, is a huge in our culture. So kaina is how you say let's eat. And these are just some terms um, that we use within our, within our family. And we actually use some of them to refer to people who are older than us. So ate means older sister. And, but we also use the, that term for any woman older than us or girl that is older than us. It's another way to show respect for someone older than us. So you might hear me say ate or kuya to someone who's not actually my biological brother or sister. Tata means father, nana means mother, and the word for child is anak. Lolo is grandfather, Lola is grandmother, and the Tagalog word for grandchild is apo. And that is the end of our presentation. I want to just pick up where you left off, Jamie, for a second and say- sure. In the take and make bags, bags of bags that we have, if you're registered, so you come to the uh, re the reference desk up in Tom's River, and there's a bag that has some things in it. But in it, I included some resources, some books. But there's a big section on the cookbooks because they were so many, and they looked wonderful. Where Miss Cecilia, who is one of the co-hosts, um, took one of the books out already. I wanted to tell everyone to. Um, we wanted to learn Tagalog from, we have an app for Mango. It's an app you can put on your phone, you can put on the tablet, you can do it on the computer for your, the Ocean County app or the Ocean County um, website. It's free with your card. So you can go on there. There's lots of lessons. It's, it's a wonderful resource. And also through Canopy, there's some videos. There's a, a couple of videos I'd highlighted. One was called Island Roots and another one was um, of Philippines, the, the farthest cross, and it's part of an, um, a series of, of Asian Americans. So we have lots of resources at the library. Um, we have my co-host, Ms. Cecilia, who's not here. She highlighted some teen books, also included in the caters of crossword puzzles, some language information about um, using Tagala, and also um, a native game. So please stop in pick up your basket it'll be here whenever you're it'll be here whenever you can get you get here if you registered there'll be one put us for you so it's okay if we open up if anybody i think a couple people had a couple questions um sorry. i saw a question about uh way back when th there's an animal that was um asked if that monkey back then i think it was the little one jumping around they were, I think there was a monkey. I don't know. I know you named it, but that was one question. If that was. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. So most of the questions actually, um, Ate Rika is going to help me <laughs> with okay. some of them. And I'm looking at the chat now, and those are my kids <laughs> with oh, the post okay. questions. So. Okay. Well, that's. <laughs> I will leave that for you. Rika, would you like to answer some of them or? Thank you. Yes, Elias or Jamari was asking the question. Yes, it's the smallest monkey in the world. It's called the tarsier. 
So would you imagine it's like the size of a tennis ball? Before they were allowed to be pet, when you visit them, it's in Bohol. It's in Visayas area. So, but now uh, they're um, going extinct. So most of them are kept in a forest where they can nurture themselves. And uh, that's so sad that it can no longer be visited by the tourists, but you can just still take a look at it. So hopefully, yeah, in the, when you visit the Philippines, you're able to see them. Let me see, there's one other question about the leader. The leader includes 10 year olds. So I'll let you read through those. And if there's not, if there's no other questions. Did you say if anyone wanted to um, ask a question, they could raise their hand. They do the, yes. they can raise their hand. Mm -hmm. oh. So if you can do that. Does anyone else have any other questions? This is a wonderful presentation. Are we ready to wrap it up then? I'm asking, but I, Jamie, thank you so much for sharing your ex expertise with us this evening. It was such an informative program. Um, about Filipino culture. I really, I enjoyed it. I'm sure everyone else did. And remember, it's being recorded. So if someone didn't get a chance to see it or you want to watch it again, you watch one of the videos, it'll be posted on our YouTube channel. From the Ocean County Library. Just go to YouTube, Ocean County Library. It should be listed under there. Great. Thank you so much for the opportunity to share our culture, Ms. Karen. I think it's a great way to you know, help us honor um, Asian American Pacific Heritage Month. So I really appreciate it and hope this is just the beginning of a, a wonderful partnership. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> thank you. All right. Well, thank you so much, everyone. Support public libraries. Like, share, and subscribe for more great videos.